Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be involved in this sermon series that we are doing on emotionally healthy spirituality. And uh, I don't know if you're into uh, gardening. If you are, you will realise that as you garden and you grow your vegetables, that you need to give the soil some rest. And you rest the soil and you plant your next crop of tomatoes next to it. And then the next summer you come back and you plant in that rested soil. And that's a bit like we're doing during this winter time. We're resting in order for growth. What is God trying to grow within us during this winter series on emotionally healthy spirituality? And the aim of this series is to help us identify and to understand that our emotional life, our emotional health, our spiritual maturity matters greatly in our discipleship with Jesus. Because often, if you were like me and you grew up in the church, often I was taught that discipleship was about uh, learning the Bible and knowing skills. And so we learnt in order to know more, and it's good to know more. We learnt to know more and we learnt skills so that we could then transfer those to other people. But knowing more and learning skills doesn't always allow for transformation, for change within us. And it doesn't always allow for us to learn how is it that we love other people? How is it that we love our enemies? Because one of Jesus' outrageous measures of spiritual maturity is how well do we love? Uh, and how well do we love our enemies? Now, to grow into a mature, flourishing follower of Jesus, we allow the Holy Spirit to transform our emotional lives. And uh, church family, wasn't that just a wonderful testimony of Tyler's this morning? The Spirit of God touching his life. And that's the prayer. That's my prayer for all of us during this winter series that we would sense the Spirit of God, not just at work here, but deep under uh, the water, under the iceberg. And so we're learning that discipleship about, with Jesus is about changing and transforming the deep things within us, that it needs to affect our emotional life, otherwise it stunts our walk with Jesus and it hinders our love for others. And so this uh, series is based upon uh, these, this book called Emotional Healthy Spirituality. And some of you have already got a copy. But if you haven't got a copy and you would like a copy for a, the special price of $19.99, uh, please see Wayne, the coffee guru at the back. And Wayne has a secret stash that he will get during the week. And this is a really interesting book. And some of you have already started. I'll pass it around. You can have a, a, a bit of a look at it. And it's a really penetrating book. And then the one that goes with it is Emotionally Healthy Spirituality Day by Day. And this book is about how do you infuse your activity, your daily activity, with an awareness of God in it. And so that book you might like to just have a look at and pass it around and uh, see if that's something you would like to ask Wayne to get uh, for you during the week. And then on our church, uh, web, uh, church Facebook page, there are some study notes that you might like to download and print out and use as you read through the chapter. And some of you have taken the challenge and have jumped into the emotional healthy assessment and have found out whether you are an emotional infant or child or teen or adult. Uh, how many people gave that a go during the week? A couple, and was it interesting? <laughs> <laughs> You're an adult, that's great. Yeah. So jump in, and there's a link on our church uh, Facebook page, and this will try to direct you in some of those areas that you may need to focus on, because it's easy in our lives to become blinkered. And so when we become blinkered, we then realise, wait a minute, I need to make a change. And the first step in making a change is deciding that a change is needed. 
And then the second step is deciding that now is the time. Because many times we think, oh yeah, I need to change this aspect of my life, but I'll wait when I have more time. I'll push that on until later. When I finish reading the book, when I go through the sermons, then I'll make now is the time. And so I would invite you to enter into this discipleship of emotionally healthy spirituality now and allow the Holy Spirit to transform you. And so I trust that this will be a rich time of understanding, of growing and of discipleship. So let's come together in prayer. Let us pray. Our loving Lord, we thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to us. Thank you for the impact that your Holy Spirit has made upon the life of Tyler. Thank you for the impact that your Holy Spirit has made upon each one of us. And so, Lord, we pray now, fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may hear your word, place ourselves within the journey of emotional, healthy discipleship, <laughs> And help us to make good, healthy decisions. <coughs> Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will transform us deeply so that we will be growing to be more like Jesus. And so as we journey through this series, may we lean into you and find our lives transformed. In Jesus' name, Amen. And so we begin this morning from the Bible and in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, we read this, Ephesians 4. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your mind and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So here is the challenge of the Christian life. The challenge is to shed, to leave our old self, or what some might call the false self, to leave the old false self in order to mature into this new self. And Ephesians 4 here is saying that this new self, who we are in Christ, this is the person you are. And that this new self is created to be like God in what? In suppressing or obeying your emotions? No. In looking like you've never made a mistake? No. In looking like that you have uh, got it all together? No. You are created to become like God in righteousness and holiness. You are created to become like God, to put on this new self in righteousness and holiness. And so if you're angry, you don't deny it, you don't hide it, you don't cover it up. Because if we do, we're not living truthful. <coughs> righteousness and truth go together. Now over the years, as we live through our lives, we uh, learn to... Uh, protect ourselves and we live out of what is called this false self, this old self. Uh, we learn to live out from the top of the iceberg. And so that false self, that old <coughs> self, is that part of us, that me part of us that runs from or suppresses or tries to ignore anything within my heart that looks ugly. Uh, that false self is the voice that speaks up with justifications of why I yelled at my spouse or why it's okay that I just lied or why it's okay I just gossip in order that I don't have feelings of guilt or shame. That false self is that part of us that ignores those bad experiences that we've had to walk through because we're afraid of what might happen if we acknowledge that hurt or pain. And when we choose to live out of this old self, when we choose to live out of this false self, we actually are cutting ourselves off from the healing, wholeness and emotional health that God desires to give to us. And so to begin the process of emotional, healthy spirituality, we have to learn to know ourselves. We cannot know 
God unless we know ourselves. We have to have a self-understanding as we put off the old and as we take on the new. Uh, Augustine, who was a great church father back in the 400, 500 AD, he said this, How can you draw close to God when you are far from your own self? Grant, Lord, that I may know myself, that I might know you. There's a sense that we have to know what's deep in the iceberg in order that we can get rid of the false self and take on the new creation that we are. And Ephesians 4 reveals to us that knowing ourselves begins with taking off the false self and putting on the new, the true self. Taking off the old and embracing the new. And this means that we learn and apply and realise that we are loved by God. That we are accepted by God. That God approves of you and God's approval of you is enough. That you are a child of God. That you have been created in his image. That he knows you, that he loves you, that he's accepted you, you are his child. Now most people go to their graves without knowing themselves and without realising who they are in Christ. And without being fully aware of it, we can live out of this full self, out of this old self, and we can live someone else's life or we can live the expectations that other people put upon us. And so the journey to emotionally healthy spirituality begins with an understanding. Who am I? How do I know myself? Well, you have been created in God who loves you. You were created by God to be capable of giving and receiving love. You've been created by God with a uniqueness and with God-given gifts. And yet at times we run back to the old false self in its layers of protection rather than embracing what God has for us in this new <coughs> There's an invitation in Psalm 139. And the invitation in Psalm 139 is an invitation for God to come and help us to see what's deep down underneath. What's underneath in order that we might move towards wholeness and healing and emotional maturity. Psalm 139 says this. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Well, the first invitation is this, Lord, search my heart. Know my heart. Now, in the Bible, the heart refers to the core of our being. The heart is that driving force behind what we do and what we think. It's the heart that what drives and orientates our life. And this is why the book of Proverbs says, guard your heart. Guard your heart because it determines the course of your life. And this is an invitation, Lord, help me to know my heart. It's an invitation to get down to the core. Who are we? God, what is it that's driving you? What is it that motivates me? And so this is an invitation to be honest with God, honest with others, and honest with ourselves about who we really are. What is it that we love? What is it that motivates us? And so that's the first invitation of Psalm 139. The second invitation is, uh, know my thoughts. Know my thoughts. Now the word thoughts uh, can be translated to be anxiety or worries. And some translations actually have that in the verse they translated, Lord, know my anxious thoughts or my anxious cares. And this is the invitation, Lord, help me. 
Help me to be honest about what I'm feeling and why I'm feeling this way. I'm anxious. But why? Well, I'm anxious because I'm worried about what the future may hold. I'm feeling shame. But why? Well, I get, went against God's commands and I sinned and now I'm worried that God wouldn't love me because of my actions. This is an invitation to be honest with what I'm feeling and asking, why am I feeling this way? Now, every now and then, and I take Angela out on a date. We've been married for 33 years, and every now and then, at least once a year, I take her out for a date. And gentlemen, I really hope that you do more often than I, because even after you're married, this is one of the things that you should be doing to enrich your marriage, is going out on a date. And I've set the bar really low once a year, but this year I'm trying to go for two. <laughs> and we've done it. Yeah. Two dates. Woohoo! But, Angela, I said, let's go out for dinner. Oh, but where? And I said, oh, I'll find some place. And we went to this place, and it was just one of these modern cafes where it was... The floor was cement, the walls were cement, the glass was radiating noise, and we sat there in this cafe and I had to shout, Angela, what do you want? And I thought, I'm not going to be able to have a very intimate conversation with my wife here in this place. And before I knew it, I could feel uh, I was shutting down, I was becoming angry. And Angela thought, oh, what have I done, Aunt Stephen's not... And then we just had to do some immediacy. What is it that I'm not happy about right at the moment? And what I wasn't happy about was spending $60 to shout at my wife. <laughs> if I'm going to go out on a date, I want it to be you. Anyway, you know what I mean. <laughs> Six, yeah, 60 that was cheap, was it? <laughs> yeah. Well, at Macca's you can get a whole range of different stuff. <laughs> what is going on in our lives? It's being honest with what I'm feeling and why am I feeling this way? And then the invitation is, uh, Lord, what are my grievous ways? God, look at what is going on in my life. It's the invitation, Lord, come and see the way that I'm living that's not pleasing to you. Help me to see it too. Lord, help me not just to justify my actions, but help me to understand what it is to have a life that's pleasing to you. Now, this is the invitation. What do we do with that invitation? Well, there are four things that we take this invitation to. It's one thing to have an invitation. It's another thing to know what do we do with this invitation. Well, what we do with this invitation is that we take it into silence and solitude. Because if we're going to work out what are we feeling and why am I feeling this, we have to pay attention to what is happening within us in silence and solitude. And you have to work out what's best for you. But maybe it's a quiet walk with the dog to examine your feelings and to hear what God might be saying through those emotions. Or maybe you're a journal writer and you want to journal about, why am I feeling angry? What's going on underneath the surface? Or maybe it's just pausing where you are and realising that you are feeling your feelings and that it's not about your other people, it's about what is going on for you. Or you might like to use that day-to-day -day, uh, devotional that's going around so that you can work through some of those emotions in your life and, and work out what to do with them. And so we take these invitations into silence and solitude, but also we take these invitations into trusted companions. To do the journey, we need companionship. And I'm sure that all of us in our journey of life can remember those occasions where trusted friends have guided us, 
encouraged us to take steps that we would have been too afraid to take if we were on our own. Uh, maybe you're someone who needs to find books by authors like this author so that you can look at who you really are. And then get a few trustworthy people around you and then lean on them. Because you'll find that learning to lean is part of emotionally healthy spirituality. That's part of the journey of shedding the old false self and taking on the new self. And so maybe today is an opportunity where you can pray and ask God, send me that trusted companion that I can lean on in my life so I can continue this journey. But also we have to realise that when we take this journey, we're moving out of our comfort zone to put off the old false self and to take on the true self is uncomfortable. To know ourselves, to what's really going on deep inside of us, it can be uncomfortable at times. And so we will need to move out of our comfort zone. But also, as part of that, we need to pray for courage. Because when we look deep within ourselves, at times there are things that we don't like about ourselves. And so we will need to pray that God will help us to see ourselves through his eyes of grace and love. And this requires the prayer to, of courage so that we can persevere through this journey. And then the final invitation this morning is part of Psalm 139 and verse 24. Lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, lead me into a better, more healthy, more mature life in you. That's the invitation. And we can take this invitation into the silence and solitude. We can take this invitation into trusted companionship and realise that this will take some time as we become uncomfortable praying for courage and God will give you courage. And so to conclude this morning, you might like to read this prayer. And maybe this prayer is your prayer for today. Amen. We're going to move into our final song this morning, which reminds us about who we are in Christ, reminding ourselves of what the Lord Jesus says about who we are.